Everyone, Tom Parks, Director of Retirement Plan Services for Annex Wealth Management, here to talk to you today about the Mega Backdoor Roth. Before we get into that, though, I've invited Jen Musa along for the ride here. Jen? Hi, I'm Jen Musa. I am the President of Retirement Plan Alliance, and I've worked in 401k administration for 15 years. And that is why I invited Jen, because this is something I've been hearing more and more about, this Mega Backdoor Roth. It's a really popular topic. Uh, it sounds super fantastic until you find out that it doesn't always work. So before we get to that, let's just start with what is, okay, Roth is after-tax contribution versus pre-tax, right? So most people I think know what Roth is. We've got videos, you can go check that out on our YouTube channel if you wanna see that. There are Roth IRAs and there are Roth 401ks. The rules aren't the same for both of them. They're substantially similar and this is why I think people get confused all the time. So it's an after-tax contribution. In the case of Roth IRAs, there are some income limitations that certain people can't do a Roth IRA because of their income. And so there's things called backdoor Roths, which are we're not gonna get into in great detail right now, but a way to get into a Roth, right? Now, in a Roth 401k, I think a lot of people actually don't know this, but there are not any income limitations. That's so right. regardless of your income, if your 401k plan offers a Roth feature, you can take advantage of it, mm -hmm. right? So, but then there's the, the Roth, the Roth IRA, the backdoor Roth, and then there's the mega backdoor Roth. It's just, it's even better than the other <laughs> one, right? So we've been hearing a lot about this. Let's get into what is a mega backdoor Roth and what does your 401k plan have to do to make it possible? So the backdoor Roth is essentially an after-tax contribution that you make after you have maximized your pre-tax and regular Roth deferrals. So for those that are under age 50 this year, which is 2021, we're at 19.5. Anybody over age 50 can put in an additional 6,500. Those monies can go in your pre-tax money or your Roth money. Uh, it's really up to you how you split that up. The mega Roth is actually money that is deferred on top of that money on an after-tax basis, and it goes into the plan and it can be moved out to an IRA. The key things about that is your plan has to allow for it. Right, so that I think is really important. For yes. starters, if your plan does not allow for an after-tax contribution beyond the Roth, then this won't work. So Correct. then people will say, oh, fine, just amend the plan and put that in there. So yeah. now problem solved, right? Now I can do it. Yeah. Uh, I would or, refer or, back or, to our yeah. ACP <laughs> testing video that we were right? talking about um, because after-tax voluntary contributions actually count as an employer contribution and they're tested as an employer contribution. And when we talk about non-discrimination testing, normally the folks that can afford to make after-tax contributions are your highly compensated employees, right. which puts you in danger of failing your compliance testing. Okay. Okay, so this is what I think comes up a lot of times is, you know, people see these things and I always talk about what the law allows for you to do and then what your plan will practically allow you to do based on all the rules that are involved and then they don't always, you know, line up with one another. So if we're doing really creative planning with the owner of a company and they're looking for more ways to, to save, you know, they like the Roth option, this sounds good, but once you amend the plan and all that stuff, you still might write into the, the testing wall, right. which ends up making the whole thing fall apart in the end. So when does this work? Like, you know, a, a practical, you know, sure. hypothetical a scenario. A candidate for a plan that would like to include voluntary after-tax would be a large plan that has a lot of owner or highly compensated employees. It would be a smaller plan that has only owners or their spouses or children involved in the plan or a solo K where it's just one person who wants to maximize all of their benefits. But keep in mind that the tax for those after-tax contributions are still paid now. Right. So it's important to talk to whoever does your taxes before you make any kind of a drastic move in your deferrals like that to make sure that you're not putting yourself in harm's way. Okay, yeah, so the key thing is understand if it's even gonna work for you in the first place. Obviously get the tax situation figured out um, and then don't yell at your your administrator when they tell you this whole <laughs> thing's not gonna, not gonna work. Because in a lot of cases where we've looked into this, it just the demographics of the plan in each case actually that we've looked at it, it hasn't worked out. So yep. it is kind of a narrow scope um, of people for, for whom this is gonna work out. Yep. All right, well, Mega Backdoor Ralph, sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully that gave you some more information, some insight into what it is and when it will and won't work. Uh, for more educational content like this, please check out the Annex Wealth Management YouTube channel. 
Obviously, you can always give me a call, shoot me an email, Jen. You could shoot me an email or give me a call if you need further guidance. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for taking the time to chat about this one. Thanks.